Phil. Joshua Young was arrested for beating Trey Swicker to death. Accused of killing his stepbrother. Did you have anything to do with that boy's death? No. Acquitted at trial. Trey's father still thinks you're guilty. Who he is on TV is not who he is in real life. But questions remain. You're saying that young man woke you up to go hide a murder weapon and clothes? Yes. You didn't tell anybody that someone had confessed that murder to you? Josh, are you the real killer here? I don't know this lady. What do you mean you don't know her? You left the barbecue to go sleep at her house. I want to get to the bottom of what happened here. In an exclusive prison interview. I think everybody knows who killed Trey. Josh's father drops a bombshell. You will not believe the shocking things he said to me. His baby face didn't fit the profile of a killer. But at just 15 years old, Joshua Young was facing a murder charge for brutally bludgeoning his stepbrother to death. To say Josh had a troubled childhood is an understatement. His father was behind bars by the time Josh was five. By 11, Josh had been in and out of foster care. At 14, he found his mother dead from an overdose. Then, just one year later, Josh's 14-year-old stepbrother, Trey, was beaten to death and left in a ditch. Within six weeks of the crime, Josh found himself charged with Trey's murder. And you'll never believe who turned on him and turned him in. His own father. Sound like fiction. Sadly, it's not. Take a look. There's some very disturbing details just coming out tonight. It is a twisted case of family betrayal and murder. Police say the last time Trey Swinger was seen alive was around 10 p.m. the night of May 10, 2011. The teen was found beaten to death behind Liberty High School in Louisville last year. Wicker suffered a traumatic brain injury and had at least five proven injuries to the head, back, and neck. The hardest thing I ever had to do is bury my 14-year-old son. No parent should ever have to feel that pain. Josh Young was at the center of an Amber Alert last week. He was found with his father, Joshua Galker, who is also Trey's stepdad. To believe that there's actually a 15-year-old kid that's capable of doing that, that's, that's sick. When police caught up with him, Galker pinned Trey's murder on his son. And Joshua Young was arrested for beating Trey Zwicker to death. Prosecutors believe that Galker told his son to kill Zwicker. But did this baby-faced boy really beat his stepbrother to death? Well, after two years of Josh being locked away, another bombshell. Josh's dad stepped forward again. Only this time, he says, I killed Trey. A surprising development in a high-profile murder case. Josh Gaffer this morning pleaded guilty to killing his stepson, Trey Zwicker, in 2011. Gaffer's plea comes exactly two years after Trey Zwicker was killed. During his confession, Gaffer told the judge that his son had nothing to do with the murder. He said he just wanted to scare Zwicker and teach him a lesson for stealing his cigarette lighter. I just snapped. And I, I hit him, he went down. I stepped in his hand, pulled the bar. He still had the bar in his hand. I hit him before I knew it, it was over. Joshua Galker should be electrocuted. He beat that boy's head in. Now, Young is charged with complicity to murder. The judge denied a request by Young's attorney to release the now 17-year-old in custody. Today, jurors heard cursing and graphic details. His mother killed a couple of mine. And it just felt right. Just moments ago, the verdict announced in the Joshua Young murder trial. Verdict form number one, murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joshua Young, not guilty. Well, at the tender age of 17, after two years in a juvenile correction facility, Josh Young breathed a sigh of relief in the courtroom as the jury found him not guilty. Now, he has never opened up to tell his side of the story until now. There are many people, I'll just tell you, who still believe Josh played a role in Trey's murder, including Trey's own father. Today, for the first time, a grieving father will confront Josh, 
the boy he still holds responsible for his son's death. But first, Josh tells us his side of the story in our exclusive interview. My dad, Josh Kecker, accused me of murdering my stepbrother, Trey. Trey and I would play basketball and hang out around the neighborhood. We shared a lot of friends. The night of May 10th, 2011, my stepmom, Amanda, decided to have a cookout at her house. After the cookout, Trey was going to go and take a shower, and I ended up going down to my cousin Cassie's house and falling asleep. On May 11th, they discovered Trey's body in a ditch behind Liberty High School. My dad was a key suspect initially. Around that time, he failed one of his drug tests for the probation board, so he felt like everything was just falling down on his shoulders. My dad said that, you know, we're going. It wasn't like, are you coming? I didn't feel like I was on the run because I wasn't running from anything. One day, he decided to take a woman hostage. The woman called the cops, and we were arrested. All charges against me were dropped. When my dad was being detained in Birmingham, Alabama, he called the Louisville homicide detectives to tell them that he could solve their case. The cops believed it. My dad flat out said I murdered Trey. My dad told the detectives that I had gone to my cousin Cassie's to have her drive me to dispose of the murder weapon. They gave dad a cell phone and let him personally call Cassie. Don't kill Trey. Yeah, right? Who looked you up in your bedroom? She eventually said that I killed him. I remember when the police came to arrest me, I said, put your hands behind your back. You know, you're being charged for the death of Trey's wicker. When Detective Russ was first telling me that my dad accused me of killing Trey, in my head, I'm thinking, OK, you're lying. I was sitting there crying. I didn't even know what was happening. I feel just every emotion possible, for real sadness, mad, angry, scared, depressed, confused, just everything all at once. Okay, Josh, um, I'm glad to meet you. You have had um, a very storied life for a young man. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, let me be sure I understand this. You, you were five years old when your father was put in prison, correct? Yes, sir. So he's in prison for 10 years, right? And you're living with your mother. Yes, sir. But when you were 14, she overdosed. Yes, sir. But then your dad, who you don't really know, gets out of prison, petitions CPS, and gets custody of you? Yes, sir. Were you surprised at that? I was taken off the wall. I don't understand how somebody could be locked up for a violent offense that long, and CPS just hands, hands me right back when I get out. Let's fast forward then, because you've now been with him for how long? whenever this situation happens with Trey? Maybe a month and a half, a month tops, a month and a half. This brings us to the night of May 10th. Yes, sir. And tell me your recollection of what happened that night. I remember we had a cookout at Amanda's house. It was me, Trey, my father, Amanda, Amanda's brother, and a couple other neighborhood kids. Cassie was there, my dad's cousin, Cassie. We had a cookout. It was just seemed like a normal family cookout, nothing out of the ordinary. We played basketball, we ate, and I just finished it like a normal night, and I went to sleep. When was the last time you saw Trey? The last time I set eyes on Trey was when he told me that he was going to go in his house to take a shower, and I went two doors down to my dad's cousin, Kathy. Okay, so when do you find out that something has happened and Trey is missing? The next day, I got off a school bus, and Amanda and my dad, Josh, were outside, and they said that Trey hadn't made it home at uh, the normal time from the school bus, so they were calling his phone, and he wasn't answering. So okay, they... now, you say that he hadn't made it home. They didn't see him that morning either, because he usually gets up and goes to school before they get up, right? Yes, sir. What happens then? Amanda and Dad had got a phone call saying that there was a body behind Liberty High School. So the possibility was there that it could have been Trey, so we were all freaking out, and we, we went to Liberty High School. So you go to the school... And how did you find out it was Trey? Trey's father, Terry, looked at, <clears throat> identified the body. And when he looked down at the body, he kind of just, he fell to the ground crying. And we, we knew it was Trey. So you knew it was Trey? Yes, sir. But you knew nothing about it? You, no, you knew nothing about his disappearance? You knew nothing about his murder? You didn't know he'd been killed? Didn't know how he was killed? Nothing? No, sir. What were people thinking about uh, who killed him? I know a lot of people initially believed that it was my father. But he denied that? He did. But then he starts talking about this murder. 
Yes, sir. What does he tell them? He calls Louisville homicide detectives and tells them that he can solve their case. And at this point, he completely just goes off the wall and throws me into this whole situation. What does he tell them? He said that it was me that killed Trey, that he was trying to get out of town to hide me and protect me because he thought that uh, I was going to get arrested. I was never a suspect. I had no reason to be a suspect. I was innocent. And so they do arrest you? They arrest me purely off of his word. You know that Trey's father still thinks you're guilty. Well, he is absolutely wrong. Did you have anything to do with that boy's death? No. Did you ever strike a blow on him? No, sir. Were you there? No, sir. Did you help move the body? Did you do have anything to do with it? Not in any way. Well, next we're going to find out why Trey's father says Josh got away with murder. And we're going to hear what he believes really happened to Trey that night. And later my exclusive interview with Josh's dad, Josh Galker, from inside the Kentucky State Penitentiary. You will not believe the shocking things he said to me. You're going to hear all of this when we come back. It's a picture I still see every night. Your son laying face down in a puddle of mud and blood. Josh Young got away with murder. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? That's more than one in five children. Now, these are our neighbors, our kids that play in the neighborhood, co-workers, friends' children. The problem is closer than you would think, but so is the solution. Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. At the young age of just 15, Josh Young was facing a murder charge for the death of his 14-year-old stepbrother, Trey. Now, incredibly, it was Josh's own father, Josh Galker, who told police that Josh beat Trey to death. But then, in an odd twist of events, his father turned around and confessed to the murder and admitted that he had set his son up to take the rap. On August 9th, 2013, Josh, young Josh, was acquitted of complicity to murder and tampering with evidence. Now, young Josh is speaking out for the first time today and also joining us is Josh's cousin Chris. Chris, I appreciate you being here. We've been talking about this Joshua Gowker and so he, he cannot be here today because he is in prison. But let's take a look at some of Josh Gowker's outrageous testimony during his son's trial. Let's take a look. And what are you serving? Life. For what? Killing Trey. Tell us the details you remember. You're sadistic, man. You want to hear it? His mother killed a couple of mine, and it just felt right. I mean, I know it sounds monstrous and all that, but it's not. If we was in the Old Testament, it would be the same thing. They committed to beating a dog to death? I mean, it was just one whack. Yeah, Y'all yeah, make it sound more sinister than it was. Thank on everything. It was broke. And you beat a cat? <laughs> killed a cat and threw it away? Yeah. What's your reaction to that, seeing, seeing him say those things? Uh, it just, it shocks me. It, it gets to me. I don't understand how a person could be born and end up like him. So why does he all of a sudden just come forward and say, hey, time out, I did it? Because it appears he's gotten away with it. You've been arrested. You're incarcerated. They're moving forward in prosecuting you, why would a selfish person like this come forward and take the rap for you? See, and I'm glad you ask, you're asking these questions because they're the questions I've asked myself. That got to me almost as much as the primary thing of why he said it was me in the first place. I've just, it's, it's literally something I cannot wrap my head around. The jury was allowed to ask questions through the judge when he was testifying at your trial. Now, take a look as Gowker is asked if he loves his son. 
Do you love your son, Josh Young? I mean, it's going to make me sound like a piece of I mean, you got to think, though, I don't know him. Would you give your life for your son, Josh Young? No. Does that surprise you? No, I, I don't expect him to love anybody. Uh, he didn't, I don't know the guy. Well, Trey's father, Terry, and stepmother, also named Terry, claim that Josh literally got away with murder. I'm talking about young Josh. Let's take a look. My son was murdered on May the 11th, 2011. I believe Joshua Gowker and Joshua Young murdered my child. I'd received the call that there was a situation at the school, and I'm walking into a sea of police cars. So I knew something bad had went on. Two officers escorted me over to the top of the ditch. That's the last thing I remember before waking up and the detectives were picking me up off the ground. It's a picture I still see every night. Your son laying face down in a puddle of mud and blood. I was asked, is, is that your son? And I said, that is Trey. Police told my husband that Trey had been murdered. Deep down inside, we knew who killed Trey, and that was Josh Galker and Josh Young. On 6-24-2011, Detective Russ called me and told me that he had made arrest in, in the murder trial of Trey. And he told me that it was Joshua Young. My response to that was, are you sure? I told the detective that I felt that Josh Galker had, had something to do with the murder of my child. On Friday, Galker pleaded guilty in the case, telling the judge it was him that beat Zwicker to death and not Young. I believe he killed Trey just because he's sick. Josh Galker was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 20 years. He should be dead. Should have got the chair. 20 years. It's worth a whole hell of a lot more than that to me. Now, Young is charged with complicity to murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joshua Young, not guilty. When I heard the verdict not guilty, I just immediately got up and walked out of the courtroom because Trey's justice did not come. I hate Josh Young because he got away with murder. Josh Young is free to go. I'm not after him, but he better not ever come in my face. Period. All right, Terry, Terry, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. Sorry for the circumstance and very sorry for your loss. As a father of two boys, I can't even imagine the pain uh, of, of losing your son. Tell me why you think he's involved. Well, um, you know, obviously the stories in the, in the murder case changed dramatically, his being the main one starting from being able to define what Trey put on with detail to not even staying at the house that night. So you think he's involved because he lied about what happened the night that Trey was murdered? Most of the time when stories change, it is a lie. Uh -huh. um, you know, I don't know what happened down there that night. I'm in the dark. Don't know what happened at the cookout that night don't know any surrounding events. All I get to go on is what I've seen, details in the crime, and so far, nobody has given me a straight answer except the detectives. And do you think that his father, uh, Josh Galker, was involved? Oh, yes, sir. You think he was there? Most definitely. You think he participated in the murder? Oh, yes. Uh, I've known Josh Galker for a long time. Uh, he's a sick individual. To be honest with you, the day on top of that ditch, I did die. And this is who come back out of it. And all I want is my truth. All I want is my closure. You heard that young Josh was bragging at school about killing Trey. There was a phone conversation that a young lady had recorded on a cell phone. There can't be a video because that conversation never took place. You've all heard me talk about Doctor On Demand, the exciting new app that my son Jay and I created that allows you within seconds to visit face to face with a board certified doctor using your smartphone. Now, usually our Doctor On Demand visits cost just $40, about the cost of a copay. But we have been tracking the cold and flu outbreaks, and since Jay and I own the company, we get to make the decisions and have decided that from now until February 28th, 
All Doctor On Demand calls are free, instant and free. Download the Doctor On Demand app from iTunes App Store or Google Play and talk to a doctor now. And yes, it's free until February 28th. Why would they murder your son? I have no clue. I mean, I, do, I don't know. Trey was a good kid. You say that you heard that young Josh was bragging at school about killing Trey. They had said that there was a phone conversation that a young lady had recorded on a cell phone. That he was bragging that he kicked Trey in the back of the head. Is there a recording of him saying he kicked him in the back of the head? I have never heard such a recording. Uh, with me, I didn't see a lot of the findings. I was living it. Well, this would have been uh, presented at his trial. I don't know what happened to that. There was a text message or a phone conversation that, that didn't make it to the trial either that supposedly depicted at 937 on May the 10th, 2011, that three of them were together, and that was Trey, Joshua Galker, and Joshua Young. They were supposedly smoking a marijuana cigarette. Uh, that blood, blood toxicology come back, it was not in Trey's blood, but he did have it in his urine. The detective display, explained to me that it would have been a very short time after 9.37 p.m. that Trey was murdered. Did you ever brag about kicking him in the back of the head that night? Not once. You never said that to anybody. And there, there can't be a video because that conversation never took place. That's why it didn't make it into trial. Uh -huh. One of the things you're talking about, and if you can look over your shoulder, we'll take a look at it here. One of the things you're talking about is that little Josh's first story here in the interview with Detective Maroney was little Josh says, after a barbecue, Trey takes a shower he sees Trey after the shower in regular clothes and then spent the night at Cassie's. Now, that's from the police record. Is that what you told Detective Maroney? I did. So you said that he takes a shower and you see him after the shower in regular clothes. But just a few minutes ago, sitting right here, I asked you to tell me about that night, and you said, I was on the porch he went in to take a shower. I went two doors down to go to bed. Yes, sir. So you're telling me here that you left before he ever take a shower, took a shower, but you're telling here uh, in, in talking to um, Maroney that you see Trey after the shower in regular clothes. It can't be both. It's not both. So reconcile this for us so he feels better about this. I've been waiting for the chance to actually explain this. My dad and Amanda, as they were having sex on the back porch that night, Trey had tried to sneak out of the back door on That's the porch. That's at 10.30. It could, somewhere around that time, yes, I was at Cassie's. And he tried to sneak out of the house after he'd already took the shower. And during that day, I'm, I've, I've heard Amanda and dad explain time and time after again the last time they seen him and what he was wearing and you know, it's just a hard day for me, and if that's what makes me look guilty, I'm sorry, because I'm not guilty. Well, but this is, this is May 11th. This is the day after the murder. Fresh on your mind, did you see him after the shower in regular clothes? No, sir. But did you tell the detective you did? I did. Okay, and, and you understand that seems very fishy to you, correct? Especially when he was asked, Five times. Okay. Then there was a second story in an interview with Detective Russ, and this was June 10 of 11. So this is a month later. Interview with Detective Russ. Their records say little Josh says he never saw Trey after the shower. He left for Cassie's before Trey got out and spent the night at Cassie's. Now that's what you told me today. Yes, sir. And that's what you told Detective Russ a month after the killing. Yes, sir. Which is different from what you said the day after the killing. Yes, sir. So why are there two different, why are there two different stories? At the initial interview, I just, I've never had something like this happen. I was, 
I was freaking out. I was at a loss for words, at a loss for actions, at a loss for thoughts. I did not know what to do. And I had, I don't, I'm not sure. Trey's father is looking at this and saying, you know, he's, he tells one story one day and another story the next day, and the truth doesn't change, only the story changes. You understand how that would cause him discomfort? I do. That's bothersome to you? Very much so. Well, let's take a break. Next, my exclusive interview with Josh's father, Josh Gowker, from the Kentucky State Penitentiary. We've all seen his testimony on the stand. Well, he's about to throw another curveball. You won't believe the first thing he told me. But you're going to find out right after the break. You said in court that you didn't really care about him because you really didn't know him that much. The jury asked me, like, the most simple-minded question. Like, did I love my son? And would I die for my son? All they do is say no. You're the mastermind, right? I mean, you can call it what you want. It's not easy to be a mastermind when you're dealing with dumb people. I mean, that guy couldn't find a strip club. But, I mean, it is what it is. I've lied this whole time, except for since arraignment. Since arraignment court, I've told you I've done it. I admitted everything I've done. Why did you want to get out? What was your plan then? Kill Amanda. Just Amanda? I mean, Terry done made it off my list. I really wasn't after him. I've always hated Terry, but not enough to, you know, unless he just happened to be there, it'd be something convenient. Well, that was Josh's father, uh, <coughs> Josh Gowker, on the witness stand during his son's trial. What, what did you think about what he just had to say? He would only kill you if it was convenient. Gowker, obviously is just one crazy guy. I mean, Josh Gowker's always been a lot of talk. Well, uh, the Kentucky State Penitentiary agreed to allow me to interview their inmate by phone. Uh, you need to listen uh, carefully uh, right from the very beginning because I dive right in and he drops yet another bombshell. Let me just ask you straight up. Did you kill Trey? No. You did not kill Trey? No. All right, then why did you plead guilty to killing him? Because they were trying to give my son life in prison. Right. Uh, who did kill Trey? I think everybody knows who killed Trey. Well, I, I don't. That's why I'm asking. I didn't. You, you did not kill Trey, even though you pled guilty to doing it. Not me. Well, are, are you not going to answer the question honestly? I mean, they can't do anything to him. It'd be double jeopardy. All right, so by him, you're referring to your son, Josh. Right. So you're saying Josh did, in fact, kill Trey? Yeah. What do you say about that? I'm at a loss for words. I, I don't understand what this guy's problem is. This is the first time he's been interviewed since he's in there, and I said, all right, uh, I just wanted to get it started about where we were. So I said, did you kill Trey? He said, no, I did not, that you did, that you killed Trey. That's not the truth, which leads me to think, what's next with him? What did you think about what he just said? I believe he's right. I mean, he could care less what he says. I mean, far as sugarcoating the truth, he'll tell you the truth. He's really too stupid to lie. Well, listen as I confront Gowker about his constant lying and how he figured out uh, how little Josh killed Trey. He here's my dilemma. You've changed your story about Trey's murder three times. What you have said is that you, first you said you thought some African-American kids in the neighborhood did it. You later said that wasn't true. Uh, you then told people in Alabama that Josh killed him. Uh, you later said that wasn't true. And then you admitted that you killed him. And now you're saying that's not true. So what is the truth and how do we know when you're telling the truth and when you're lying? I watched your testimony in Josh's trial and you said, hey, I'm a liar. What can I tell you? Yeah. I can pass any polygraph test. 
that I didn't kill anybody. Uh -huh. That I wasn't there when he was killed, and that I didn't have anything to do with it. All right. So w why should I believe you now when you've lied three times already? I mean, how do I know when you're lying and when you're not? That, that's what I'm, tell me how to read you. Um, I don't know if anybody can, you can. Yeah, I wish I was looking you in the eye right now, I, I tell you for sure. Did you know that it was Josh that killed him the night that it happened? No. When did you discover that it was Josh? Later on that weekend. All right, how did you find out? Josh told me. What did he say to you? To quit letting it eat me up. Your son has just told you that he beat someone to death, another young boy to death. What did you say? No, he didn't say he beat him to death. He just insinuated that he did it. You know him. What's your reaction to what he's saying? I think Josh Gowker was there. I mean, this young man didn't do it by himself. Somebody hit Trey in the side of the face with a lot of force. Broke his eye socket, broke his jaw. Somebody beat him with something. We don't know what kind of object. It was never retrieved. They beat him multiple times. Not by the one time that Gowker explains in his testimony. I mean, just to put it in the shortest way possible, the way I believe it happened is Joshua Gowker, Joshua Young, and Trey Zwicker, they had an adult taking them down to a ditch bank to smoke a joint. Joshua Gowker hit my son in the side of the face while this young man finished it off. According to the coroner report, Trey was not dead when the final blow was given. They don't really know exactly when he died, but he was left there in a puddle of blood, severely beaten. So you think Josh Young finished it? By the fact that this young man's story has changed so many times, who he is on TV is not who he is in real life. Why did he hit your son? If, if you say he hit him, why did he do it? That I don't know. His lies are just catching up with him. What do you want to ask him? What do you want to ask John? The show doesn't stop when I walk off stage. Visit drphil.com for exclusive video and advice you won't find anywhere else. And be sure to sign up for our newsletter while you're there to be the first to know what's coming up on the Dr. Phil Show. So log on today. What are you waiting for? But you told your mother on jail calls that Josh killed Trey. Now, if you're trying to sell that you're the one that did this so you can take the fall for him, then why would you be telling your mother on jail phone calls that you know are monitored and recorded? Why would you be telling her Josh did it? Well, this was prior to the indictment. This, that, that, my, that was over in Indiana. That was prior to any indictment. That's when I got indicted over there. That's no answer. And my point was that he was saying that he was going to take the rap for you, was trying to convince everybody that he's the one that did it and you didn't. But yet he gets on a phone call that he knows is monitored and recorded and says to his mother that you did it, which is completely inconsistent with trying to convince everyone that he did it and you didn't. So I, I, that's why I ask him about that, because his lies are just catching up with him. What do you want to ask, Josh? Tell the truth. And I have. And your first six stories don't count. Well, from, I've told the truth. The truth is that I had nothing to do with your son's murder. I'm sitting here right here in front of you today telling you that, looking you in the eye. And what, what makes you think I'm going to believe you? Well, I don't know what I can possibly do to help you believe I me mean, if you don't already. What is it that you say you're seeing on Facebook that goes to his character? Just tell me what it is that's there. A lot of drug reference, <clears throat> gang affiliation. Got a nice little picture about two weeks ago, him had his red bandana over his face, all red shirt, little fake gun pointed, little selfie. Are you involved in the gang? 
problem, sir. Did you take a picture on the internet with a gang like a tire and a gun? I don't have a Facebook account. Well, where did you see it? Facebook. Hey, pull it up. There's no Facebook account registered in my name. I do not have social media. It's been deleted. It's on my phone backstage. Did you used to? I have in the past, yes. Did you have that picture on your Facebook before you deleted it? I did not. My Facebook has not been active for how long? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Couple of, two or three weeks. It's been a while. Big Josh is a monster. He really is. He would do anything he can do to get attention. That's just Josh. Are you afraid of your father? On May 10th, 2011, 14-year-old Trey Zwicker was beaten to death and his 15-year-old stepbrother, Josh Young, was charged with the murder. Two years later, Josh Young was acquitted of complicity to murder and tampering with evidence after his own father, Josh Galker, pled guilty to the crime. Now, I spoke with Josh Galker on the phone, and once again, he's changed his story and says it was his son who murdered Trey. Why did you go on the run shortly after uh, the funeral? You, well, for several You take your mother's car and I head to Alabama. I filed a bogus EPO on me, which was going to lock me up. Uh, the homicide detective talked to Josh twice that week, and it was just closing in around him. They were closing in around Josh. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So you take Josh and a couple of buddies, and you, and you go on the run to Alabama. You kidnap a woman down there according to the authorities you get caught but you start telling them all right I, I can solve this murder so at that point you decide to tell him it's Josh why well I told Josh that it if, if I couldn't get him away I told him you just got to play crazy man premeditation is a beast you, you got to make them know that you know it, it, it's manslaughter at the worst but then they indicted him as an adult if you were going to take the fall if you were going to take the heat off of him why did you wait a year to do it they indicted him as an adult and and i, I that means he'd get the same punishment as if a grown man did it i'm just snapped and i i hit him he went down i stepped on his hand pulled the bar he still had the bar in his hand i hit him before I knew it, it was over. So then you take the, the rap and say that it was you, but then you pled not guilty. Well, my attorneys pled me not guilty at arraignment, and I cut my attorney off and told the judge at arraignment that I killed Trey, at arraignment, mm -hmm. very first court date. I watched your testimony in its entirety. You said in court that you didn't really care about him because you didn't really know him. You had been in prison while he was growing up. You really didn't know him that much. Well, the, the so jury asked me. why take such a fall? The jury asked me, like, the most simple-minded question. Like, they, they, they asked me, did I love my son? And would I die for my son? Do you love your son, Josh Young? I mean, it's going to make me sound like a piece of I mean, You got to think, though, I don't know him. I mean, it was so simple. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I knew they were wanting to find, when they asked me that, I knew that they were wanting to find Josh not guilty. And I gave them what they needed to do that. Are you mentally ill? No, no, I no. Mean, in fact, I was probably the most competent person in that courtroom. Well, but, you know, I listened to you laugh during your, your testimony in trial you laughed about killing a dog you laughed about killing a cat you, same you, thing any monster would have did you, you, are you a monster absolutely not then why did you laugh about that i mean to sell my role dr phil i mean you're you playing the part that. i went on the little local tv stations and gave interviews and was a true man just a monster because 12 of somebody that was watching that is going to be over in that box 
and I have to be, I, I just had to be consistently a monster, man. So you choreographed this whole thing from the beginning? No, I was thrown into it, and but from I mean, there I took over. Once it happened, then you started choreographing this illusion that you were this murderous monster. I had to. Did you ever have that conversation with him? Never. He's coaching you, telling you how to minimize this if they're closing in on you and about to get you. See, the conversation never took place because they weren't closing in on me. They didn't have a reason to close in on me. He says you're coming here like a choir boy, that in fact you're a reckless, bad guy, disrespectful, et cetera, et cetera. Well, which is true? He doesn't know me. I may not be the best kid around, but I'm far from reckless or bad. Well, our Louisville affiliate did a video chat with Josh Young. This was after his acquittal when he had run away from his foster home. Take a look. Days after 17-year-old Joshua Young's foster family reported him as missing, he said he wouldn't return home and refused to say where he was. I'm perfect. I had no problem. He said he had no information about the murder of his stepbrother, Trace Wicker, but said this about his dad, Joshua Galker, who pleaded guilty to the crime. We're Josh Galker's too. Yeah. That wasn't you? That was not my voice that said the last part. No, it wasn't. Who, whose voice was it? A friend that I was with. A friend that you were with? Yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to blurt that out. That was you with the hat on, smoking? Yes, sir. I'm with Josh almost 24-7. He's a great kid. I've known him since he's a baby. Big Josh is a monster. He really is. Uh, you never know what he's capable of. Uh, like I said, his story's all over the place. And then he would do anything he do, can do to get attention, just as he just did again, saying that he didn't, you know, that Joshua did it. It's just Josh. It's are you, Josh. Are you afraid of your father? I'm afraid of what he can do, yes. Stop justifying your inactivity and avoiding the challenge of change. For help getting started, go to DrPhil.com for 11 seasons of advice, articles, and exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Plus, sign up for the Dr. Phil community to share your story and find support from others. All on DrPhil.com. We are nowhere near done with this story today. We have barely scratched the surface, so we are going to continue this controversial murder case tomorrow. Here are some highlights from tomorrow's show. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Acquitted at trial, but now... You're saying that young man woke you up to go hide a murder weapon? Yes. Shocking new revelations. A child's life has been taken and you didn't tell anybody that someone had confessed to you? Are you willing to take a polygraph? What will the results reveal? Wow. I can't believe this. They're all guilty. They all knew what happened. That's tomorrow. A special thanks to the Kentucky Department of Corrections and the Kentucky State Penitentiary for allowing us to interview Josh Galker. Also special thanks to Jefferson County Clerk of Court for supplying us with the hundreds of court documents and video from Josh Young's trial. For more information on today's show, please go to drphil.com.